Hi everyone, I'm here to talk to you about two things. I want to say a little bit more about Medium and then I want to give you a preview for, um, excuse me, a preview on the readings for um, Essay 3, the ones we were reading in Module 8. Um, I've chosen all of the readings because of the various mediums, or I should say media since that's the plural, um, the various mediums that are being used um, by the writers. And before we do the preview, I just want to remind you that medium is another aspect of the rhetorical situation. So we're still studying the rhetorical situation. Um, and medium is similar to genre um, in that there are conventions to follow or rules to follow for the document. But what makes medium different than genre is that we're focusing more on the appearance of the document. Um, you know, I'm using the word document to represent the thing that contains the writing and the images and the title and everything else that you put into your piece of writing. So I have a list of media or mediums. You see it both ways online. And I'm starting at the bottom and I'm going to just kind of shout out a few of them. Um, and I'll post this in D2L so you can take a look at it as well. Um, letters. There's a difference between uh, an op-ed and an open letter. You might um, think about an open letter. It's a published letter to a specific person from the writer. And so it's a, um, a public letter that's usually published. It used to be in magazines or newspapers, but now it's just published online. Versus an op-ed, which is usually an essay, an argumentative essay, that is published in um, a periodical, like a newspaper or a magazine. An academic essay is a medium. It has a certain look to it. It has requirements. Um, MLA format is an example of the requirements we follow when we write an academic essay where MLA is required or where APA, American Psychological Association's um, format is required. Lots of other ones here too. Um, websites. Y'all, um, there are a lot of free websites. The one that I like a lot is called Weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y, but you could definitely write a piece um, on the topic you're choosing for essay three um, in a website format. Um, you could write the script for a PowerPoint um, and also create your PowerPoint for this assignment. Um, one of the readings you all is in a comic format. And so I'm gonna slide over here and pull that one up. So you might choose to read Life is a Pre-Existing Condition. It's about COVID-19. This was published about a month ago. Um, and so you'll get to see how the drawing, the artwork, and the writing um, work to communicate the whole message, which um, can't be done with just words. That's why this writer decided to communicate through a balance of image and text. And I think that's one of the things we'll learn most about um, during essay three is the balance between image and text. And the requirement that we have in the world these days that almost all writing we do needs to have some balance between the way the document looks and the text that's in it. Um, so that's uh, one example, just kind of previewing the reading for you there. You know what, I'm going to scroll back down and go back to academic essay, and I'm going to pull up Inked Well. It's one of the most academic pieces um, for the readings in um, Module 8. Uh, it's quite researched. Um, I will throw out there to you that it's part ethnography, part library research. You know, our libraries are available to us online, but there's a balance between um, scholarly research and uh, real life research, I would call it. You know, it's first person um, observation, first person um, experience um, in a community. So that's why I'm using the word ethnography, uh, E-T-H-N-O-G-R-A-P-H-Y. But you might check this one out if you think you're going to be sticking with an academic essay um, medium. This is a good example. I will point out that it's also in a journal. Um, so this was written in an academic context and then submitted to a journal. Let me bring the list back up. Um, let's see. So lots of things I want to talk about. Oh my gosh, y'all, Twitter threads for me are the reason I stay on Twitter. There are so many academic thinkers, so many critical thinkers, so many creative thinkers who know a lot about topics and they post whole Twitter, Twitter threads. I must combine those two words. Um, it's almost like writing an essay, right? It's like paragraph by paragraph, each new Twitter post that goes through the thread. So if you're not familiar with Twitter threads and you think this might be an option for you, 
um, for SA3, check it out. It's really an interesting um, thing that's happened in Twitter since we've left the more limited um, word count or, or character count um, scenario that we used to have in Twitter. And people are really posting long, well-researched, well thought out, very logical um, Twitter threads and posts. Um, let's see some other options here. Um, talked about letters already, so that happens to be on my list here a couple of times. Magazine article, let's look at this one. So this is an online magazine. Um, this essay is called Contraindications. And when you scroll through it, you see there's a nice balance again between image and text. But um, I'll have you know that this piece also has a really nice mix of genre. Um, there is some reflection on loss. There's information about climbing, hiking, living in the outdoors, friendship. Um, so this would be an example of an online magazine. And you see, you know, it doesn't really look that much different than an essay. In fact, even the um, images have captions under them. So this is a really good example for you to check out too. Um, if you want to see what a magazine would look like. Um, I would say a couple of things. You know, there's an ad here that I didn't, um, that's not coming through. You notice the text is wrapping around some of the images. Um, so there are some document um, design issues you might, will want to think about for this one. And I think I want to make sure. <clears throat> Oops, that's not the one I wanted. I want to make sure I haven't missed any of them. Oh, yes, the last one. Um, let me bring my list back up to see where that one is. Sorry, y'all got a little clicker happy there. Um, I would say that the last essay you can look at probably aligns really well, not only with academic essay, but also with Um, a magazine or a newspaper. And here's why. Let me pull this one up. This one's called The Ways We Lie. And you'll notice that it looks like a regular essay from a textbook, and that's probably where this one was copied. I don't remember where it was originally published. But look at the introduction, and then you'll notice that a uh, writer starts using these sections. And there are these sections with epigraphs um, in, the, in the beginning. So there's a really unique layout, essay layout here, with these section headers, with these epigraphs. The sections then sort of um, rely on the epigraph to um, focus it and to drive the message about that particular section. And then when we get to the last page, you all see that it has sort of a regular um, conclusion at the end. Um, there's this second epigraph kind of put in the middle of this last section here um, to mark the beginning of the introduction, excuse me, the beginning of the conclusion. So you might think about um, some kind of a layout like this um, that's a little bit different than what you've done in previous essays where it's just paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. There's a different layout here, right? And there's a um, what is this called? It's still an academic essay or just an essay, um, but there's some creativity in the um, design here. So I wanted to just give you that quick, um, I think at the same time, a uh, preview of the essays. And I wanted to bring the list back up because I clicked on something I didn't want to. Um, but also wanted to talk about Medium a little bit more than I did in the introduction to um, this week. And um, let me know if you have any questions about Medium, and I'll post that list so you can start looking at what some of your Medium options are. And then if you have any questions about how that Medium would work, how you would lay it out, how you would accomplish the Medium, um, if you want to do something different than an essay that has images in it, um, let me know. And, you know, we can do a check-in meeting or you can email and ask questions. Have a great rest of the week, you all. Um, hope it's been a good start. Sounds like we're getting some more snow. We've had a really snowy winter, which I've enjoyed. But I hope you've um, been enjoying um, your days and the class. And you all, we only have a few more days or a week and a half left before spring break where we, where we will get a little more of a breather than uh, Module 7. So I'm looking forward to that too. Take care, and I'll talk to you later.